Hi, thank you. Um, I consider myself an environmentalist, and I think about the concept of expansion, and I think of it in terms of the expansion of the human population and what some would call the carrying capacity of this world that we live in, the Earth. And I wonder if when you speak about expansion, you speak about things in the physical realm expanding in the same way as the metaphysical context in which you speak of it. And if so, how does this organism, the Earth, handle our physical um, size? Well, you have to remember that every moment that you are deciphering your environment, you are radiating rockets of desire that are asking for improvement. So it may seem odd, but it would be accurate to say that in some cases, an expanded idea of improved life might be a diminishing of something. In other words, for example, let's say you have uh, a disease in your body and you're wanting the absence of it. Well, the absence of it is the expansion of the idea and the expansion of the life experience, but it is a diminishing of the disease itself. You see what we're getting at? And so you don't need to worry about the balance or overpopulation, for example, of your planet, because if you were to begin to have more population than your planet could comfortably and joyously sustain, then many of you would begin to radiate rockets of desires that would ask for something different, and future generations would be adjusted accordingly. And so we like to say that you don't need to worry about those things because they're managed from a broader perspective. Mm -hmm. But we want to say, while they are managed from a broader perspective, meaning the decision to come forth is from broader perspective, it is certainly understood because of what you are emanating from your leading edge vantage point here and now. So it, it really is not something that you need worry about. The reason I ask is because we hear about things like global warming and so forth, that after a certain point in time, the, the ability to change the pattern no longer exists, and our ability to react and change our desires in order to prevent an impending problem we, we would be, it'd be too late. We understand human concern, and we also acknowledge that the concern is spoken from humans who have not managed to scrape enough dirt together to launch an Earth into orbit. In other words, it's an interesting thing to stand in a place of lack of knowledge and from your basis of lack of knowledge to then make your predictions that are also baseless. So should we not be concerned about our behavior in relation to, to the world in which we live? Concern is an interesting word because when you are concerned about something, you're pushing against what you don't want. And when you're pushing against what you don't want, you cannot allow what you do want. So the good news is, with all of the beating of the drum of global warming and all of the awareness of the situation, and it's not as great as people might think, but there are a lot of people talking about it, with all of that awareness, then all of those rockets of desires that are emanating from mass consciousness in human form on the planet, in other words, who want longevity of the planet and want a place for their children and their children to live, as you are launching those rockets of desires, you certainly are amassing this improved life experience on planet Earth, which for most of you will not be realized until those of you who are concerned croak. We're not saying that your concern is keeping it from happening. We're saying your concern will keep you from getting to experience the benefit of it. It's a funny thing. Jerry and <laughs> Esther have been really enjoying this summer. It's been cooler everywhere they've been. Mm -hmm. Everywhere they've been. They have not had their air conditioners on in their bus while they're sitting in place or sleeping at night all this long summer. And they tease and say, it must be about global warming. <laughs> 
And they were visiting with a friend the other day who was talking about the, the cool in their area of San Antonio, how much cooler it has been there. And Jerry is teasing, it must be about global warming. And she said, yes, I think that is the reason for it. <laughs> and Jerry and Esther laughed because everything that's happening is now because of global warming. Whether it's warmer or colder, it's all because of <laughs> global warming. And we understand what the scientists are saying. The global They're, climate change is really Global what's climate change is what they're talking yeah. about. But you must not look with such narrow view. In other words, even if you look over the last decade or two, you have had as much or more fluctuation in your planetary weather than you are having now. It's just that now it is the topic that makes you want to point toward that. And we are not wanting to burst anyone's bubble. If you have found something that you want to beat the drum of and it makes you feel more alive, we're not speaking of you necessarily, we're speaking of anyone, we certainly would not want to distract you from the contrast that causes you to shore up your intentions about your desire for a good life on this planet. In fact, all of that contrast is about that. We're just saying to you that you cannot live the joyful life that you came here to live when you are looking at some aspect of something that causes you concern and you're continuing to hold yourself in that mode. And so while there are scientists who would say, but we know what we're talking about and we must get awareness and we need to get people to be responsive to this negative thrust that we are offering, we will never agree that a negative thrust is good for you in the short run or the long run, ever. And so you can't possibly control all of the people and get them to do all of the things that they need to do in order to stop this global warming. So now all that's happened is that you've been informed about something awful. You feel powerless to do anything about it. And now you're depriving yourself of well-being as you're using that as yet another excuse to not allow the well-being to flow to you. So you don't allow the well-being to flow to you and then you pronounce on your deathbed, see, I told you things were going bad. <laughs> And, what we're, and so what we're saying is the premise that we would use if we were standing in any of your physical shoes, no matter what the concern is, whether it's financial, which feels more personal, like I can do something about it, or global, which feels so out of control that I don't know that there's that much that I can personally do about it. If you'll step back into a more general statement and reach for whatever thought that you can think that makes you feel better, you'll come into alignment. And this is the way we are soothing our physical friends who are in angst over the planet. You're not controlling your planet from your physical standpoint. It is being managed from a broader view. This Earth spins in its orbit in perfect proximity to other planets. You've got to understand that there's a bigger plan behind it than Congress. <laughs> in other words, the well-being is huge in comparison. And so all of you can find whatever excuse you want to nitpick over things and use as your temporary excuse to not allow the well-being that is all queued up for you to, you to be yours. But we promise you, five years from now and 10 years from now and 20 years from now and 30 years from now, you'll look back on this impetus and you'll say, as you said about so many things like Y2K or the harmonic convergence or on and on it comes, every new prophet brings another thing for you to worry about. It was much to do about nothing again, you see, again. And we're not trying to get you to be environmentally irresponsible. We're saying to all of you, it's not your environmental irresponsibility that's killing you off in great numbers. It's your vibrational irresponsibility. And so what's happening here with this global warming thing is that so many of you are using your desire to be responsible environmentally and you feel utterly out of control and now you're not being vibrationally responsible to yourself. So you're using it as a, as a reason to pull yourself apart. You are not better off beating the drum of global warming. You're better off beating it a little, which makes you know that you want to appreciate your planet and you want to do your part to care for it. You want to be considerate of other people around you. In other words, we're not for a moment suggesting that you should just go crazy. We're saying find personal alignment. And when you as an individual find personal alignment, you'll be inspired to the ideas that will allow the expansion. The economy of your environment, go back even 100 years or 200 years and look how small your economy worldwide was compared to now. And many would say, well, our population is bigger. Your population is bigger, but it is not percentage-wise. When you measure the population 200 years ago against the population today, this economic growth is incredible. And it's not because you're trucking in resources from other planets. It's because you're doing a better job of 
mining the resources that you have because of your contrast, which is causing desire to be born. And it will always be that way. You will never be in a place as people upon this planet that the current condition does not inspire to you to something more and that this environment does not then yield to you something more. You're constantly going to be morphing in ideas, in ways of living, and it is our promise to you that life will, as it always has, it will continue to improve because there is no going back. That is the duality that most people don't want to talk about. It's that idea of good versus evil. And we don't want to talk about that sort of duality either. We want you to understand that things are good and getting better, and that is the eternal experience of this eternal evolving universe, you see. And so when someone looks at anything, a pocket of anything, and uses it as evidence that denotes otherwise, we say, you're out of sync with the entire expanding universe, which must say expansion is inevitable and expansion must always be good. Why? Because the contrast caused you to ask for the improvement and source went to the improvement. It's only those who beat the drum of what's wrong that hold themselves apart from the improvement are giving those doomsday scenarios, you see? You cannot be tuned in, tapped in, turned on to the knowing that is you. You can't be that one energy that is in alignment with source and worry about global warming. The two do not go together. You cannot be in alignment with the eternal being. You cannot see this world through the eyes of source and worry about global warming at the same time because they don't match up. Mm -hmm. Thank you.